Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this afternoon session entitled Audio Distribution with Savvy Audio, where we will take a look at the software feature set of what we call Savvy Audio, along with our three new hardware products, which include the DSP one, the AMP one, and the DMA one, which effectively establishes a new product category or product type in our industry that just hasn't been seen before. So this is a really exciting session about Savvy Audio that Peter will guide us through. And everyone remember that QA is live and open. So send in those questions and thanks for your time on this next session. Thanks, Byron. So yeah, as he said, this section is all about Savvy Audio and our products. And while the hardware itself is pretty cool, we got a small 1U form factor uh, with lots of digital and analog IO. Uh, what I'm most excited about to show you is the UI. So let's take a look. Okay, so this here is our DSP and DMA UI. It's gonna be the same for both. Uh, the DMA just has amplification built in, so there's gonna be a couple of different options on your output side. Uh, so if you notice right off the bat, this is not what your standard DSP UI looks like. Uh, we tried to keep our same design philosophy of uh, large, easy buttons to find, uh, simple color combinations that are consistent throughout, and uh, just try to make things easy for you to, to kind of see and get, get in and out and do what you need to do. So we've broken it up into three sections. The top is our scene selection toolbar. Uh, this is where you can save scenes uh, and then recall them later. The center section is our configuration zone. So this is where you're going to make configurations. <laughs> and then on the bottom is our uh, IO toolbar uh, carousel. So if you slide through here, you can see it got our inputs and our outputs, and they're all there ready to go. In the IO carousel, uh, you can also um, rename your channels. So if I wanted to add another satellite, I can make this SAT8, and it's named. We have our solo and mute options there as well. Um, but then this is also where we can um, change and uh, decide what we see in the configuration zone. So by checking these checkbox, uh, you can add a remove, uh, which is the same operation we do in all of our Savvy UI, just to keep things consistent for you. So let's get configuring. So input one here, I have set up, um, named it as music box. So this will be like the music server for a venue. Um, you can set up different uh, input modes. So you can either do your line input, um, which is just going to be line level. Uh, you got your microphone input. Uh, and we actually have four microphone preamps built into the DSP and the DMA. So you can plug your microphones right in. Um, we also have Savvy Audio. And so we can bring in our uh, digital sources from other Savvy Audio products. In this case, we're gonna keep it simple. Just do um, line in. We have our gain adjustment, of course. So you can set the gain there on your input. Um, we also have um, input pairing, so you can do a stereo pair. And so now once that's selected, input one and two are combined into one card, um, or I can uncheck that. And now we have two mono channels again. Finally, at the bottom, we have our audio delay. So when you're working with large uh, distributed video and audio systems, um, a lot of times the video will end up reaching the, the customer much later than the audio. So in order to make those sync up, you have to introduce some delay on the audio and then everything can match. And so we just made that really easy to set that up right here. Um, so again, you can, you can you know, time, time that out and make sure that, that everything's sounding good. Okay, so once you have your input set up, you just need to route it to an output. So when I click on this Chevron, everything here pops up and we see all the available outputs. So in this case, I'm gonna just route it to the lobby. And um, since I already have output one pulled up, you can see uh, now that I've selected the output, the output card shows the input. So we want to make sure that it's really clear uh, what's connected to what, because you know, the, the more complicated the system is, the more easy it is to get to lost, you know, get lost where everything is connected. So we try to just put it in front and make it really obvious. So the other options we have are our output, of course, because this is the DMA, we have our speaker output types. Um, so four ohm, eight ohm, 70 volt, 100. We even have low pass filter options so that you can do a sub out uh, so you can send the signal to a sub amp. And then finally we have Savvy Audio. So this is how you would route uh, audio 
over the network to another savvy audio device. So here I'm just going to leave it at 70 volt. Uh, just do the standard kind of commercial system here. We got our gain adjustment again, more delay just to you know make sure everything's lined up perfectly. And then yes, we show you that the um, input one is is connected. So it's pretty cool. Makes it really easy to make some simple changes in routing. So this is all great, but you may be asking yourself. Well, what happens if I want to mix a couple things or um, do some EQ or do some other signal processing? Uh, well, that's when you want to switch it over into DSP mode. Uh, and that'll unlock the full feature set uh, that, that we've provided here. So as soon as I make that change to DSP mode, you'll notice that now we have in between out inputs and outputs, we have mixes and our zones. Um, the other thing is that on our input card, instead of going to available outputs, it has available mixes. So these are little cues uh, to you that we've now changed the kind of the order of our routing or we've just kind of inserted a few more steps, uh, but it's still going to be that kind of same left to right orientation. So um, let's take a simple example where you might want to just have um, your music playing and then have an announcement mic come in and kind of take over so you can hear what's happening and then come out and then your music is still playing and everything's good. So let's let's see how we can set that up. So on input one, this is our music box. I want to go ahead and route this to mix two because I've set this up already as I've named it as music and paging. Um, and then I'm going to select my input three, which is one of my microphone inputs. Again, I've already set that up. Um, here I'm going to enable the paging. And so this gives us that, uh, that real feature of instead of having to switch between your music and then the microphone or just have them at the same level, we can actually set up um, ducking, um, which is where you can actually lower the music audio as soon as the microphone comes in. And then when the microphone cuts out, the music goes back up. And it's called ducking because it's literally like the volume is ducking. So. For those of you who aren't familiar with the term, we didn't make it up. This is an industry term, uh, but yeah, that's what that is. Okay, so we can also adjust the uh, the level that uh, the ducking occurs, so that that's how much audio we're we're taking away from your from your music source. Uh, so that's it's not just a stagnant number. You can actually adjust that, which is pretty cool. Um, and then we got our microphone EQ options here. Um, we have auto so that there's just some basic intelligibility EQ going on to make things just sound clear for a speaker uh, or you know, somebody speaking, not a, not a speaker. <laughs> uh, but you can also switch it over to manual mode. And when you pop that up, now we have, um, you know, we have a multiband EQ. So we can go from, you know, just your low mids highs. You can add more bands. So now we have um, five bands and all the way up to a nine band EQ. So you can really kind of tune the sound uh, however you need to. Uh, so we give you that full functionality. Or you can just kind of switch back into auto and just, just let it take care of itself. OK, so I have uh, one input going to mix two. Now I'm going to I've got my paging mic set up. I'm going to also send that to mix two. OK, and there it is. So let's take a look at our mixes. Uh, pull up mix two. Go ahead and just collapse these for uh, screen real estate sake. And you can see now we have um, under mix two, which is our music and paging. Under so source inputs, we have music box. And under paging inputs, we have our mic one. So we have those two together. They're going to be combined. And then finally, we just need to route this to a zone. Uh, so here, I'm just going to go to lobby. And because you know I just wanted to go to the lobby, it just has one speaker. I'm going to pull up my zones next. Again, we get that feedback that mix two is coming here. And then we want to take it that last step and send it all the way to our lobby output, which is output one. So you can see here, you know, every step along the way, you get kind of a, a, a clue as to what happened before or what's coming next, because it's all contained within these cards. So that's a fun example of just uh, taking a single channel and then adding a paging source. Um, but what we can also do is create like actually mic mixes. So let's take a little bit more complicated example. I'm going to go ahead and just clear all these, um, go back to my inputs. And so in this example, uh, imagine you have a large auditorium that's kind of a multi-use space. 
And so sometimes uh, they want to have four separate areas that they'll have uh, different things happening. Uh, so there's four separate outputs of your amp, but they'll also want to be able to combine it into one big space that they're all doing the same thing. And for that large combined uh, situation, it, we're going to have a, a set of panels. So uh, you know, four microphones and going to be different people talking about uh, products, maybe a uh, savvy audio, who knows? But uh, let's, let's get started on the actual configuration. So uh, we're going to have four microphones. So I've already set up um, four separate uh, inputs as microphones. I'm going to go ahead and switch mic one uh, into just regular mic mode instead of paging. Um, and you can see, same deal, I can just route to uh, mix one, which I determined is going to be my panels, my panel mics rather. And you just simply expand and select, and everything's cool. Now, if I really want to quickly get rid of those, you may have noticed me doing this earlier already, is I just hit this none, and uh, we also have an all, so you'd actually be able to see everything at once, but uh, the none is really great to just kind of clear everything out of the way, go on to my next thing. So, got my inputs routed to a mix, let's pull up that mix. Oh, wrong mix, <laughs> mix one. And again, having that feedback right there just tells you immediately if you're working on the right channel. Okay, so I have the correct channel mix one with my four microphones. Um, I'm gonna now route this to a zone. So in this case, it's the auditorium zone. Uh, so I've set that up as no zone nine. And now let's bring up zone nine. And again, you see mix one is, is going there. And then finally, let's route it uh, to some outputs. So here I have four separate outputs uh, that are all part of that auditorium, so A, B, C, and D. And uh, you can see it's now routed to all four of those areas. And if I was to pull these up right here, you can see all four of those have zone nine as their uh, input selection. So even you know large complicated systems where you have multiple speaker zones, uh, mixing of mics, paging, all sorts of stuff, you can see it's really easy to configure all this here in our UI. So I'm really glad that you were able to join us today. Um, and if you wanna learn more, um, I'm actually the trainer. So I'll be uh, hosting the training courses and we'll go into further detail on this and you'll actually get to uh, get your hands on it and uh, play around. So thanks again for joining us and uh, really look forward to meeting all you guys that are training. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us for that Savvy Audio session. Thanks to Peter and the whole crew for bringing that and making that possible. Some really cool new stuff from Savvy Audio software, hardware, features, and uh, all that you saw there. Okay, so just to wrap up this session and tell you what's coming for the final session of the day, again, email us if you'd like. We would love to hear from you. Check out the site. Uh, check out the forward slash training page to look at uh, training information and training dates there if you're already an existing dealer with us, that is. And uh, of course, there's only one remaining session, and that's at 5 p.m. Central Time. That is our live Q&A with the entire Savvy team. We really are looking forward to this one. We have been collecting up the questions that have been coming in via the chat all day, and we will be addressing many of those. It's a full hour dedicated session. Uh, we will go as long as you guys would like for us to go on the Q&A. Uh, hopefully there will be a lot of good interaction there. We love the interactivity, and so we're looking forward to that as well. Uh, thanks again, and Byron signing off until we see you back here for the live Q&A. Thanks from the entire Savvy team.